Okay, so the breastplate comes up like this. The wishbone here is at the back. You can just sort of feel it right there. And you can kind of see there's a line of fat right here, which is really what separates the two sides of the breast from each other. Okay? But we're going to take our legs and our thighs off now. So if you want, you can then turn it this way. I bring it up on its side. I take my knife and I kind of just come through that skin area right here that separates this from the breast. Just bring it down here. Now, what you have to do though is the thigh bone comes in right back here at the back. You have to pop it up a little bit, pop it out of the joint. You're then going to take your knife and you're just going to cut the leg and the thigh off like that. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Once you open that up, you just bend it back towards me. There you go, cut just a little bit more. Pop that. You can pop the bone out. I hear it. And then you're going to take the leg and the thigh off. So this is what's called a chicken quarter. All right? And then you do that to the other side. And Carl's going to put you on our YouTube channel. <laughs> so then you end up with two legs and two thighs. Try and keep the skin intact on that breast. All right, once you have the legs and the thighs off, you're going to separate them. If you look on the chicken, for the leg and the thigh where it comes together, there's a line of fat right here. That tells you exactly where that joint is. So it's almost like it's a dotted line to tell you where it's cut. So you're going to take, and you can feel it, if you, you can feel that joint come in there. So then you're just going to take your knife and come straight through. Alright? You want to pull the skin off of the leg and the thigh. We're going to save that because we're going to make some chicken cracklings. Passing out with the tour with it? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and then you can just pull the leg skin. Now, it's actually easier. Oh, uh, to. Do the. Um, do this with a paper towel because then you've got something to grab onto. Because the leg meat and the thigh meat is dark meat, you can get away with cooking without the skin on it. And tomorrow when we make the coco van, which is the uh, chicken and red wine, it's just going to be a lot nicer because we're not going to have to uh, take all the fat off. So on the leg, I'm just bringing the skin back, like so. I'm taking a paper towel and just pulling. And those can go into a bowl together. So legs and thighs in one bowl. So we're putting the breasts in the other bowl. Ended up in the Robert's going to get you all some paper towels. This is going to save us time tomorrow when we go back through and pull all that skin off. 
not a difficult soup to make. This is nothing, you know, earth shattering as far as presentation or anything like that. It's you have it because of its, you know, nice still thing. And it's a, it's a nice soup. I mean, it's a, you know, nice fresh soup. You can put mushrooms in this, you can put a can of tomatoes in, you can do whatever you want. All right, we need to get on the stove in a pot of water. That one's going to stay here because that's right. Oh, sorry. Sorry. We need more. Fair enough? We're good. This is a very simple salad. Um, Carl, remember uh, your roommate who first uh, had a salad like this? Mm -hmm. That cooked for him and his roommates. And then, you know, like when I did my, I did my internship on the island of Crete. So I love Greek food and that type of, so we do a Mediterranean there where we do this of one of my favorite menus from there. Okay. And we'll do an Abaga lemon soup, which is basically a chicken and rice soup, but with lemon. We make changes to the recipes as we go. Not, and you might think, well, why didn't you just write down the changes? Because I want to show you how to adapt a recipe. Or if we know, like, for our potato gratin, we know that there's starch and potatoes. We know sometimes we just put the raw potatoes with the milk, it can actually end up being kind of watery. So there is a technique where we slice the potatoes and we're actually going to cook the potatoes in the milk first. You know, garlic rubbed in the, in the baking dish, and then you're going to layer the potatoes with the milk and the cheese and saute the leeks, which we're going to do. But I have found this little trick of cooking the gently cooking the um, potatoes in the milk. And we did a cup and a half of milk and a cup of cream. We just decided to enrich it a little bit. So we're gonna gently bring this milk to a warm, we're gonna put all those potatoes in, and we're just gonna kind of give them a head start in that cream mixture. And it's the starch for the potato is going to actually thicken that up a little bit, and it's going to help us to have a more cohesive uh, dish at the end versus having you know, the water from the potatoes kind of separating out of the milk or the milk separating. So it, it works in essence kind of like a root, but we're using the starch from the potatoes. So over here, we're going to heat up some olive oil. We need some white wine for this recipe. So if somebody wants to pull the white wine out, we need a quarter cup. Dry white wine or vermouth. Dry vermouth, if you're not a wine drinker, you don't want a box of wine hanging around in your house, get just some dry vermouth that you might use for martinis. Quarter cup. All right, so this can go in. These are our leeks. We actually want to sweat these just like with onions, because they're in the onion family. We're going to salt them a little bit. So I'm going to see if you want to come up and just start gently stirring those a little bit. Now to sweat something, you need to put a lid on it because that acts as the condensation. The steam goes up to the top, drops back down, we create, in essence, a steam bath. 